Hey, I hope you're all doing well today. I wanted to share a quick thought on this whole demonetization issue that has been going around lately for the umpteenth time. You know, it all started back with, uh, I think it was PewDiePie had some controversial video and the uh, advertisers saw a Wall Street Journal ad about it or an article about it and it was like making it seem really, really bad. And the advertisers were like, ah, we can't have our ads running on this crap, ah, you know. Not realizing that the Wall Street Journal was really doing a hit piece and the issue was really this, it was like this, and they're making it look like this, ah, you know. Anyway, it's an old media versus new media issue, all right? YouTube is new media. There's a lot of good, um, honest, straightforward, open, non-biased, really good channels on YouTube. Philip DeFranco. I don't always totally agree with him, but he's usually, I think, pretty well on with his analysis of things. And of course, he's getting demonetized a bunch. I mean... <laughs> He's not mainstream. He doesn't talk about the world in the view of mainstream media and the view of mainstream corporate America and the view of mainstream politics and political correctness. He gives it for straight up the way it is. And he's getting demonetized for it. Now, I think his language could be cleaned up a bit, obviously. And I'm sure that has something to do with it. But when someone like Casey Neistat gets demonetized for talking about a tragedy in a positive light, talking about how to help people, and get demonetized for that, it's ridiculous. Seriously? This whole thing's been blown out of proportion, not just by YouTube. Blown out of proportion by the Wall Street Journal. It was blown out of proportion by the corporations who advertise on YouTube. Reality is, Wall Street Journal, uh, mainstream media, they're suffering. They're losing viewership, they're losing their influence and their power that they've had, they've gotten used to for decades. They're losing it to new media like YouTube. And YouTube had gotten so big that they were in the target. Let me tell you, if somebody's shooting at you, it means you're on target. Right? It means you're doing something that they have noticed, they have recognized. And they may not like it because it competes with them. It hurts their bottom line. And they'll come after you for it. This is uh, corporate politics at its finest. So, and that's, that's the real issue. YouTube got in the crosshairs. And so, the old media started shooting at them and did some hit pieces on them, and now you have the results. I, I really feel sorry for YouTube for bending over backwards on those advertisers. I think YouTube should have said, see advertisers, other advertisers were doubling down on YouTube while these advertisers, these, you know, like Verizon went out, T-Mobile came in hardcore. Or was it Sprint? I don't remember. Came in hardcore taking over all those ad spots and hey, Verizon's loss. Yeah, it may have hurt YouTube in the short term, but I think in the long run, the community would have been a lot happier. Advertisers eventually would have come back when they realized that we actually do have some tools here that we can use to prevent our stuff appearing on um, content we don't want it to which they weren't using very well. <sighs> Talking and driving at the same time, sometimes you gotta stop and pause and focus. And look at where you're going because you're at an intersection that is a little tricky and you know it's a little tricky. You need to focus a little more. Because <clears throat> I gotta merge with crazy traffic drivers. <sighs> but anyway. YouTube, you made the wrong move. You gotta do something to make it right with your community. 
you got it. It's a nice that has some issues, some some thoughts on it. Robert Blake has some thoughts on it. Philip DeBrink, DeFranco has certainly had lots of thoughts on him, a number of thoughts on it. Let's see what you can do about it. Let's see how you can make it right. You know, what's done is done. Let's move forward. And before Amazon comes along and decides they're going to make their own community or, you know, someone else like VidMe suddenly gets a huge investment or something and allows them to build up their advertising and their their infrastructure or something like that. You're not safe, YouTube. You think you are right now, you may be, but eventually you're not going to be safe much longer. You just... You gotta make it right somehow. You gotta support your community. You can't have a community that's not happy with you. And that's what makes you unique. Just like Casey Neistat was saying, that's what makes you unique. That is your niche. All this TV stuff, all this original content stuff, that's already being done. There's plenty of other platforms out there doing that. People are not going to pay a bunch of money to you for that when they can get it elsewhere for cheaper. Seriously, cheaper. Yes, cheaper. Maybe not the TV thing. You're probably priced just about right at the TV thing, but the, I don't know. There's so many other players out there. Eventually, they're going to catch on with the community thing. Eventually, someone's going to do the community thing right. Do it better than you, and YouTube, you're going to be left behind. So you better make it right with your community, you better do it fast. You maybe have a year, maybe two. Figure it out. And for the rest of you, have fun out there. Why else would you go on an adventure than to have fun?